Thank you for stopping by. I'm Thomas. This is Zarbo Audio Projects, and today I'm going to show you how I constructed these wonderful speakers. We'll get construction started. I'm not sure how far along we'll get, but I've already titled this video Part 1, so I'm pretty sure we're not going to get them finished. Anyway, this speaker is a collaboration between myself and John from the John Audio Tech YouTube channel. Just in case you haven't seen his channel, He's an electronics guru specializing in amplifiers. He did a nice job explaining how our collaboration came to be, so check out his video on these same speakers to hear how that happened. I'll leave you a link for that. Basically, John already had the drivers he wanted to use picked out, and also the rough cabinet size. I just took his basic idea and threw a curve at it, so to speak. I like to draw a sketch of every speaker cabinet I build. It helps me see how the various panels fit together and how many of each I need. Do the front and back go inside the top and bottom or the other way around? This sketch answers those questions for you as you build your cabinets. Also, this is where you can write down dimensions in your preferred units as well as jot down comments that will help you keep things straight as you proceed. There are several ways of creating curves when it comes to building speaker cabinets. I've done it a few different ways, including the most common, the kerf cut. That involves creating evenly spaced cuts partway through the material to be bent, which allows the panel to curve to the intended final shape. That can work fine, and here are a few different speakers I've built using this method. There's also stuff called bendy plywood, which is extremely flexible. It's kind of pricey though. A friend of mine sent me a piece just to show me how flexible it was. It can bend a lot more than you'd think. My favorite method of creating curved panels though is the lamination method. I use several sheets of 1 8 inch high density fiberboard HDF and glue them together to create a rigid but fairly light panel. I've used this method on dozens of projects and it always works great. It's a lot of fun to make curved speakers. I think they just look so cool and I feel like it's worth the extra effort. So the big guy is cutting out the various pieces of MDF to create the cabinets. Blanks I'll call them because most will need some further trimming. We'll get to that in a bit. We're using any scraps we have here, larger boards, smaller ones. We're just trying to get all the panels cut out so that we can then get to work on the fun part, the curve. I've designed the basic enclosure in Basebox Pro to work out the rough dimensions. Now I just need to create the curve on the top and bottom profile. There are several ways to do this, but I think it just makes sense to use a piece of the very material I'm going to use to create that curve. That way I can be sure it will take the bend without breaking. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to get a smooth curve without creating a sharp bend. Here's another pro tip. Try and make sure the last inch or so of the curve is straight on both ends. That will make it easier to clamp the panel and get a strong bond when you go to glue it up. An angle is okay, just not a curve. Now that we have one nice curve drawn on our blank, the big guy is going to cut that profile on the bandsaw. A jigsaw will work as well. Just be sure to leave the pencil line on your cut. Keep watching to see why. Here's another pro tip, or maybe a cheat code. Take the scrap you just cut off and use it to sketch the other side of the blank for the other rough cut. Now that we have the rough shape, I can rough cut all the other panels with the curve on the bandsaw leaving the pencil line. Speaking of the pencil line, now we're going to sand right up to it on our original panel using a sanding block that is on a perfect 90 degree angle to the panel. Note that although the other side is rough cut with the curve, I'm only perfecting the curve on the one side. I use a piece of the 1 8 inch HDF to make sure it will conform to the curve I'm sanding. I will use the one perfect curve to create exact copies of that perfect curve on both sides of another rough cut panel. And then I can use that to clamp and flush route all the other panels. This way all the panels will have the exact same curve no matter which side is up. If the curves were slightly off from one another, the sides would be slightly wavy when you go to glue on the thin panels to complete the enclosure. And now I've got all my tops, bottoms, and braces 
Peeking ahead a bit in the construction process, we can see that there are two one half inch thick braces in this enclosure, which help to keep the panel sizes small, reducing resonances, as well as facilitating the bending of the side panels. There's one right under the tweeter opening, that's no problem, but the other one needs to be basically right behind the woofer, which is a bit of a problem. Not really a problem, you just have to anticipate where the woofer frame and magnet will live once mounted and make clearance for that, as well as make sure that there's enough room to insert and secure the crossover once we get to that point. Also, braces need proper airflow, so the big guy is justifying the purchase of this floor stand drill press by shooting some holes with the Faulkner bits into the top brace. Observe the big guy in his natural habitat, using his jigsaw to cut out openings for the crossover board to pass through, as well as for clearance for the rear of the woofer structure. Well, it's almost time to glue the carcasses up. We just need to find the angle at the back of the cabinet and trim down the rear blanks to that same angle and width. Yeah, that feels just about perfect. I mean, literally perfect by my fingertips anyway. Angle feels right. So that's good. I'm ready to glue these carcasses up then. Slow your roll there, big guy. There is a bit more to do before we start uncorking the tight bond. For one thing, I'd like to get the crossover mounting situation squared away while everything is still nice and easy to access. Uh, this, this will be the front baffle, so might even glue this to the bottom and to the front for a little bit of extra security. This will be the other mounting piece. This notch here is the same height as this, which is about half of an inch roughly. So the bottom brace is going to look something like this. I'm going to put the crossover in through this way, something like that. And then this crossover board will slot into this and there'll be a single screw going through this crossover board into this and even into that maybe a little bit just for good measure. Here's another tip for you. If you didn't create dados for your braces to slot into, then just measure and mark some lines on the respective panels where you want them to sit. That way when you do your glue up, you won't have a brace situated where your tweeter's supposed to be. Man, if I had a dime for every time I put a brace in the wrong place, well, I'd literally just have like two dimes, but still, it's irritating, so why not take precautions, know what I mean? Okay, now it is time to pop the tight bond. Let's get this carcass glued up. So, remember that drawing I made up way back near the beginning of this video? This is where that thing really comes in handy. Believe it or not, it's fairly easy to spread glue on the wrong part of a panel. And when you go to assemble it, you won't have glue on a joint where it needs to be. That's bad, especially for a speaker whose main thing is vibrating and shaking. Referencing the drawing you made can remind you of what parts of which panels needs to mate up with other panels and therefore have glue applied. Hey, I'm only telling you because it's a mistake I've made in the past. Don't tell nobody though, okay? I just wanted to mention that the red thing you see there is a smallish square kind of thing. I purchased it from Amazon. It keeps square in three dimensions and it's small so it's handy for truing up a glue up as you go along. You want to make sure that your panels are perfectly parallel and perpendicular. You don't want your speakers italicized, right? Let's leave that for the letters. Wax paper. There's wax paper underneath the cabinet carcass I'm gluing up. It's hard to see, but it's there. Depending on how much glue squeezes out of the whole thing once you start bearing down on the clamps, you may end up gluing the cabinet to the table. My table has enough layers of goodness knows what on there and 
Usually a few smacks from a rubber mallet will free up whatever I'm gluing up, but I think it's good practice to try and make sure the glue is only on things that you actually want glued. Call me crazy. I usually plan everything out in advance, but I guess I forgot I needed to clamp the braces as well as the top and bottom. Using a few calls to help provide even pressure worked well in this case. You can make calls out of scrap 2x4s cut in half or anything that has enough rigidity to resist bending. Hmm, I don't think that went too bad. Yeah, I had to swing the rubber mount a little bit here and there to persuade things into place, but the glue starts tacking up pretty quick, so sometimes you have to make some adjustments, that's all. But I've got to wait a couple of hours for the glue to cure before I can uh, glue up the next carcass because I only have enough clamps of this size to do one at a time. So, in a couple hours, we're gonna do this all over again. Maybe it'll go a little smoother because of lessons learned on how these particular materials interact. But we'll see. Stay tuned for a part two coming to a YouTube feed near you.